Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today we're going to be going through type 3 trigonometry questions, which are equations in terms of constants. So in a type 3 trigonometry question, you'll be given a trig function, right, in terms of a constant, which could be a letter of the alphabet such as KT or even ABC, and you'll be required to express other trig functions in terms of this constant or this letter of the alphabet. So what would an example of a type 3 trig question look like? Well, here we are given an example. If cos 20 degrees equals P, so you can immediately see that P over here is a letter of the alphabet and it's a constant. And we have a trig equation over here, a trig function cos 20 degrees, and that's set to equal to P. And we are asked to determine the value of another trig function, sine 20 degrees, in terms of this constant. Okay, so what method are we going to use to approach a question such as this? Well, step one would be to find x, y, and r, or the missing variable, using Pythagoras, and then to solve the question. But you'll only solve the question if the angle in the question equals the angle in the given equation. And later on, we'll see exactly what this means. Step two, if the angle in the equation does not equal the angle in the question, then we're going to have to make use of reduction formula to get the angle in the question equal to the angle in the equation. And if this doesn't even work, then we're going to have to resort to using double or compound angle formula to solve our question. Now, step one is primarily what you'd see in grade 10. And step two is primarily a grade 11 step because you wouldn't have learned about reduction formula until you got to grade 11. And you only know about double and compound angle formula in grade 12. So you can only use step three in grade 12. But that's not to say in grade 12 you couldn't be asked a question that would just have you use steps one or steps two. So just to see what the difference between a grade 10 and 11 and 12 question looks like, I've just put some examples up here. So for grade 10, you can see if cos 21 equals P, you'd be asked to determine the value of sine 21. And you can see that the angle here in the equation equals this angle here in the question. So they're both 21, right? So the angle in the question equals the angle in the given equation. But in grade 11, this isn't the case. We have the same question, cos 21 equals P, but the question asks us to determine cos 201 degrees. And you can see that 21 isn't the same as 201. So what you'd have to do is use reduction formula to make cos 201 look like cos 21. And now what happens in grade 12? Well, in grade 12, we have the same cos 21 equals P here, but we are asked to find sine 42 degrees. Now, even if you were to use reduction formula on sine 42 degrees, you wouldn't be able to make it look like 21. So you'd have to use double and compound angle formula to do that. So let's go ahead and do an example on a type three question just so we get a grasp of the method and also see how they differ between grades 10, 11, and 12. So we'll stick with the same question uh, we've seen a couple of times now. Cos 21 degrees equals P. So it's a trig equation in terms of the constant, and our constant in this case is P. And we are asked to determine, in terms of P, three different trig expressions. Sine 21, cos 201, and sine 42. So step one is going to be to use Pythagoras to find our missing variable x, y, or r. And we are largely going to be using the same process we did in type two trig questions. So we're going to make sure we in the form trig function equals number, cos 21 degrees equals p, right? And we're going to have to put in our definition for cos. But before we do that, I'm just going to write this equation slightly differently. I'm going to say cos 21 degrees equals p over 1 to make it a fraction because we know our uh, definitions for each trig ratio is a fraction, either y over r, x over r, or y over x. Um, so I'm going to write it as a fraction and I'm going to say p over 1 because that's the same as p. 
then I'm going to write our definition for cos here, which is x over r. So from this, we can infer that x is equal to p and r is equal to 1. Now we can go ahead and use Pythagoras to solve for y, which in this case is unknown. So we know from Pythagoras, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Our reason for that is Pythagoras, okay? So we can substitute r as being 1 and x as being p. And then we can go ahead and solve for y. So y squared is going to be equal to 1 minus p squared, okay? So now we can square root both sides to get rid of that square. That's going to be then 1 minus p squared. So y would be equal to plus or minus root 1 minus p squared. Because remember, when you square root something, you can either get a positive or a negative. So now we have to choose, are we going to take a positive or a negative y? So we'll take positive y being positive root 1 minus p squared. And why are we doing that instead of taking negative y? Well, that's because if you look at the question here, it, we are told that cos 21 degrees equals p. And we know that 21 lies in quadrant 1. And we are also told that cos equals positive p. So in quadrant 1, we know that both x and y are positive. So y must be equal to positive root 1 minus p squared. So for 21 degrees, we know our x, our y, and our r. We found x to be positive p. y, we said, was positive root 1 minus p squared. And r is positive 1. So now we can use these uh, variables to solve our question. So we know that sine 21 degrees equals y over r from our definition of sine. Now, we've solved for the variables x, y, and r for 21 degrees. So we can merely substitute them in here because the angle is the same. So this first question looks like our grade 10 type of question. So that's going to equal y with solved to be root 1 minus p e squared. That's all going to be over r, which is 1. So our final answer for sine 21 is root 1 minus p e squared. Now for our second question, which is to find the value of cos 201 degrees, we can't substitute x, y, and r into cos 20, 201 equals x over r. We can't do that because the angle 201 is not equal to the angle in the question, which is 21. So we've only calculated x, y, and r for 21 degrees and not for 201 degrees. So we have to change cos 201 somehow to make it look like 21 so we can use our x, y, and r. So what we're going to do is we're going to use reduction formula to make cos 201 look like, um, to make the angle look like 21. So we know that 201 degrees lies in the third quadrant because it's between 180 and 270. So from reduction formula, we know this is 180 push forward. So we can rewrite cos 201 as cos 180 plus 21 degrees, right? And that because 180 is a supplementary angle, our trig function remains the same. Remember, s for supplementary, s for same. That would then become cos 21 degrees. And now always remember to check your sign. Look at the original. Cos 201 was in the third quadrant where cos is negative. So our final answer is going to be negative cos 21 degrees. So now we can substitute our ratio in, which is cos 21 is x over r. But remember, it's negative in this case because we have a negative on this side over here. So we can substitute our x and r. That would be negative. x we've calculated to be p and r is 1. So our final answer for cos 201 is going to be negative p. So we found sine 21 to be root 1 minus p squared and cos 201 to be negative p. Now we have to find the value of sine 42 degrees in terms of p. 
Now, this is your grade 12 type of question because 42 degrees is already less than 90 degrees. So you can't really use reduction formula to make it look like 21. So we have to resort to either using double angle formula or compound angle formula to make 42 look like 21. Now, if you are paying attention, you would have noticed that 21 multiplied by 2 equals 42. So this is an indication that we should try to use our double angle formula to make sine 42 degrees um, to change that angle to 21. So sine 42 degrees, if we treat this as a sine double, we can use our formula which states that sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta plus theta, and we can use that to simplify this. So we can rewrite sine 42 as sine 2 times 21 degrees. And from there, we'll apply our double angle formula, and that would become 2 times sine 21 degrees times cos 21 degrees. And now you can see that we have 21 here and 21 here, which is the same as the 21 we've solved our x, y, and r for. So we can finally substitute them in. So we'll go ahead and put in our ratios for sine and cos. That will be 2 times y over r times x over r. And we'll substitute our values for x, y, and r in. y is root 1 minus p squared. r is 1. That's multiplied by x is p over 1. So our final answer is going to equal 2p times root 1 minus p squared. So that's our final answer for sine 42. 2p into root 1 minus p squared. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this explains how to go about doing a type 3 trick question. And be on the lookout for more examples. We'll be going through more examples in the next videos. And in the description below, you'll see a link to a worksheet where you can work through these before you watch the video to try and get some practice. Thanks, guys. Thank you.